Today on Yester Kitchen, we are gonna make one of Spain's beloved dishes that became very popular here in America. You're gonna love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. If you're new here, welcome. It would be an honor to have you join us as we explore retro history and childhood food memories through food. <laughs> Let's get started. So today, today we are gonna make Spain's iconic cold soup. It's called gazpacho andaluz, although most of us know it here in the US as just gazpacho. The recipe comes from this book. It's falling apart. Ah, see, I'm, I'm so, it's, it's absolutely falling apart. It's called the International Gourmet Cookbook, this way. The International Gourmet Cookbook. The cover is long gone, but here it is. I'll show it to you. From 1979, it is, I read it cover to cover so many times. It is full of all kinds of international dishes because in the 70s, remember, what do we keep talking about? International cooking, so popular. So we are making gazpacho andaluz. What is gazpacho? For those of you that don't know, it is a cold tomato-based vegetable soup. No meat, sometimes for garnish, which we're gonna do today, but the base of the soup is tomatoes, and then it's very common to add green pepper, cucumbers, sometimes chilies, sometimes, ah, tomatoes. <laughs> Although a lot of times now in the modern twist, which we're not gonna do because we do retro, there is now strawberries added, watermelon added. There actually is a green version called gazpacho verde where they don't use the tomatoes, they use tomatillos or any other honeydew or any other kind of green vegetable. It is spectacular in the summer. The true Spanish version has bread in it, which is what we're gonna do today. So gazpacho was created in the Andalusian region of Spain. And that's it right there. It act is blossomed now. It is beloved in all of Spain and all of Portugal. But the original influencer of this dish, believe it or not, was not Instagram. It was ancient Rome. So the story goes that when soldiers went off to do what they did, they would bring along with them garlic. These are the Roman soldiers. Garlic, olive oil, and hard bread. And what they were able to do is they were able to create a paste out of these things that whenever they stopped, they could make some sort of soup out of it. So that's how it started. Story goes that when Christopher Columbus, who was Spanish, came to the New World to discover the New World, he brought back to Spain with him tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers. And from there, they took that, plus the influences from ancient Rome, the bread and the garlic and the olive oil, and they created this gorgeous soup. So true, true gazpacho does have bread in it. It's not just a vegetable only, although here in the US, we primarily see it without the bread, but with the bread is not only authentic, but is absolutely delicious. And there are stories that some other influences to gazpacho were actually the Moors from North Africa, or the Arabs, or even the ancient Greeks. That's just like, it's just like, you know, you make a soup, every little thing goes in, well, all kinds of different cultures come in. But this soup has its heart in Spain, and we're gonna start making it, and I'll tell you a little bit more. Okay, in my happy, little baking dish, and the only reason I'm using a baking dish is because it's nice and flat. I have four cups of French bread cubes. These are a day old. You want them a little dry because we're gonna pour chicken broth on top of it and it'll be, absorb it a little better instead of just turning to mush, you know? I am gonna take my little cubes and you can also use hard rolls if you want, that's fine. As long as you have, you know, they're, see they're still, they're kind of hard now, which is exactly what you want. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the recipe says chicken broth because it all depends on the size of container you have. So you're just gonna wanna go until the chicken broth comes up to maybe about an inch because you want all your bread to completely absorb this broth. So let's see. Yeah, yeah it's probably about an inch. Okay. So what you wanna do is you wanna wait for a few minutes while it completely absorbs. About halfway through, you wanna just turn them. You don't have to take a tong and turn each individual one. Just take your happy little spoon and just give it a little toss and just make sure all your bread crumbs, not crumbs, I'm having a hard time today. All your bread cubes are completely, completely absorb all the chicken broth. If you really see like still a lot of dry spots, you're free to add more. You just wanna make sure there's not chicken broth left over, you want it all absorbed into this bread. So I will be right back when that happens. 
Hey, okay, so all of our bread cubes are completely, completely saturated. They have soaked up everything. If you're a vegetarian, you can use vegetable broth. That should be okay. The original recipe is chicken broth, which is what we do, but vegetable broth should be fine. You're really not using a whole lot. You can either use a blender or a food processor. The only reason I brought out the food processor is because the blender is so high, my camera <laughs> will like not see into it. So we're gonna use a food processor, but you are welcome to use whatever you like. So let's get this all ready. Truth be told, I've been making this since I was about, I don't know, 16 years old. It's so good. And like I said, it's gazpacho andaluz, which is truly, truly Spanish. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take half of our bread and put it right in the food processor. In you go. We're gonna add one and a half cups of cubed and seeded, here's how I seeded it, cucumbers. You don't have to get out every last seed, but just, you know, enough. You just kind of take the spoon and just run it down the center of the cucumber, the seeds come right out. It doesn't have to be uniformly chopped because it's in a food processor. On top of that, you want one medium green pepper, chopped up, two cloves of garlic. So okay, it's a little better in the garlic, right? <laughs> two teaspoons salt, a quarter cup of olive oil. Oh God, is this looking good? And I'm telling you, this is not only great for summer, but it's great for winter too. It's great year round. It's just one delicious, very, very fresh and healthy soup. Quarter cup red wine vinegar. There we go. I know I said tomatoes, but we don't need them yet. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in and make it really smooth. Ready? Okay. Now you have this beautiful, beautiful green mixture that you're gonna pour into a bowl. Look what I've got, my happy little 1970s mixing bowl. I love it so much. Okay, in it goes. Whoop, hold on, I'm gonna have to put this down so the blade doesn't fall out. Back on your food processor for part two. There it is. Just, see it's beautiful. It's beautiful, it's smooth. Oh, it smells so good. And we're almost done, can you believe it? We're gonna put the second half of the bread in. And while we're doing this, where did the name gazpacho come from? Truthfully, no one quite knows. It has roots in Greek, it has roots in Arab, it has roots in Hebrew, and it has roots in Old Latin. All of these languages have a word that is kind of like a, a piece of gazpacho that means little pieces. And what little pieces are referring to are the little pieces of broken bread to harken back to the Roman times where they had little pieces of bread. Two pounds of tomatoes, all cut up in no particular order. And if they don't all come in, I mean, if they don't all fit in, I'm having the worst time today, stick with me, I promise this is gonna be good. If they don't all fit in, we'll just do a second round and it looks like they're not going to. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and blend all this, put it in the bowl, blend the rest of the tomatoes, put it in the bowl, and we'll be right back. Okay, here's round one. See, it's nice and smooth and happy. Into the bowl it goes. Ooh, it looks like Christmas in here. And I know some of you are saying, wait, gazpacho is supposed to be a chunky soup. Stick with me. I promise, we'll be good. And our last batch of tomatoes, give me a second, I will show you everything. Okay, take a look. Is that beautiful? We do have to stir it, but I wanted you to see the tomatoes against the green vegetables. So now what we do is we mix this whole thing together. And you're not gonna get a bright red gazpacho. If you are familiar with gazpacho and you know that it's a very bright red soup, this isn't bright red because of the bread. But like I said, the bread is beyond authentic and really adds body to the bread to the soup. You're not gonna taste bread, you're, but you are gonna taste the thickness of it. See, this is this beautiful pink, which happens to be my favorite color. Look at that. Now, the fun part, we taste. You might wanna add a little more red wine vinegar or a little more salt. So let's see what we need. I think it needs a little more vinegar. This is where, it's like cooking, right? It's not baking, it's, rock, it's not rocket science. It's not specific, it's to your taste. And I'm gonna add a tiny bit more salt. I keep my salt in a little container so I can have more control over it. That's just my happy place. Because it's cooking, and we're cooking from the past. I bet you didn't know how old gazpacho really was. I mean, fabulous. Okay, now 
give it one more taste because that's the fun part. Perfection. Oh my God, is that good. You gotta make this. It's not good unless it's cold. So I'm gonna stick this in the fridge for about an hour or two. We're gonna come back. It comes with all kinds of fun garnishes that we're gonna go over and I'll see you then. Okay, it's been a couple hours. It was very hard to wait, but trust me, patience, grasshopper, it's worth it. This is what you get. A oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Seriously, gazpacho. So here's how you serve it. You serve it in your happy little bowl, happy big bowl. Everyone gets a bowl. And here's some accompaniments you can use. I have bacon, of course. I have sliced green olives. Mine are actually anchovy stuffed. I love anchovies. You can use the standard pimento stuffed. You can use garlic stuffed. You can use whatever you like. You can even use black olives, whatever you like. Cucumber. See, this is where the texture comes from. I have cubed cucumbers. I have diced green pepper. I have diced onions and I have scallions and they're in a separate bowl because hubby hates onions so we can't touch. So shh, don't tell him. So you serve a bowl to your guests. Make it all pretty. I'm gonna actually make a kind of a bigger bowl because yum. Okay, so you serve a bowl to your guests and then your guests get to play with their food. How often does that happen? I happen to love onions, so we're gonna go. I'm gonna put absolutely everything in. There go the onions. There go the cucumbers. Green peppers. See, now you're laying a ring flavor on top of flavor. I'm telling you, those Spaniards, oh my God, do they know what they're doing. This is just, you go to Spain, you'll find this everywhere. Got some olives. Ooh, do, 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 do. And what would be complete without bacon, unless you're a vegetarian? But what would be complete without bacon? <laughs> you just wanna give your guests all options. Another option would be sliced almonds. I'm not a fan of it, but that is also a very, very traditional garnish. So I know a lot of you have a little proclivity to spice, including me. If you wanna spice this up, you would add it before you, you know, in the, in the big bowl, before you start playing around with it. The only spice I would recommend is Tabasco. I have, they are not a sponsor. I have nothing to do with the company, but their flavor just melts perfectly with gazpacho. So if you wanna spice it up, this is what you use. If you don't, we're good right here. How gorgeous is this? How gorgeous is it? And I'm, guys, it's delicious. It is worth the time in advance because you need to wash your vegetables, peel your vegetables, chop your vegetables, and then you have it all ready and it just takes a minute. So. All that's left is to try it. So if you've never heard of gazpacho, you gotta try it. If you know gazpacho, you gotta try this. I would never steer you wrong. Of course I gotta get it with the bacon in there, right? I have no words. Well, it's also a childhood memory because I used to make it. It is bright, it is fresh, it has texture because we played with our food, but it's smooth. The bread absolutely makes the dish. You don't taste it. It just gives it body and gives it thickness. And but the tomatoes, this is one good soup. I will not steer you wrong ever. <laughs> if you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood, or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every week. In the meantime, there's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, Every dish, even gazpacho on the loose, oh, something new, has a story, right? <laughs> I will see you in the next video.